Hello and welcome to FIT, Financially Independent Traders, an online trading community focused on teaching you to become one of the top 10%, a consistently profitable trader. FIT welcomes traders of all skill levels, whether a novice or a seasoned trader. Our FIT family will enhance your skills through in-depth technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and most importantly, the psychology of trading. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and visit us at fittraders.com and start your seven-day free trial today. The Fit Fam looks forward to seeing you soon. What's up, everybody? Doing a market recap video for today, April the 2nd. Hey, first off, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hey, we're at 13,600 followers. Took a year to reach 1,000 followers. Now headed towards 15K, so thank you. Thanks for watching, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, and also leave some comments. Let me know how you like the videos, what would you like to see more of. Feedback is a gift, so willing to accept it. Let's talk about what's happening in the market. So the S&P 500 is starting to look like the potential that we could put in a bottom, that the bottom is in, potentially. And if you're only saying, no, can't be, we gotta go down, then it's too much of a bias. You have to be open-minded. And when I look at a chart and I see what a chart is doing, and I say, okay, we are bouncing from the 0.382, that's a strong area to bounce from. You're looking for a higher low. We consolidated. We got stopped right up over here in this 263 range. Where was this exactly? 263.33. We got stifled in this range. We came back down. Big upper wick. Inside bar, but a very bullish lean on this inside bar. And holding the 0.382. Very notable today. Jobs numbers came out again. And the market responded bullish. Initial reaction was bearish. But... What happened when the initial reaction was bearish and we pulled down and we came down to those pre-market lows. Let's go look at the pre-market here. Let's go look at this here. It's going to clean this up right now. We came down over here. We broke yesterday's low and immediate hammer. This tells me the algos turned on. It wasn't a hammer. Actually, it was a spin top. Can I get it originally? It was looking like a hammer. Algos turned on. Boom. We shot up. So now I'm looking at this as the potential that the higher low is in on the daily chart because we're holding the 0.382. Now to confirm that this was a daily higher low, we need to come up and break this 263.33 range. We're gonna watch, we're gonna see if that's gonna happen tomorrow. If that's the case, then I'm looking at this as a pitchfork with an A, B, C. That's how I'm looking at it with the C being today's low and then potentially looking for a larger move. And in that larger move, I'm going to be looking for a golden pocket move or just a back test of where we were and we could get stifled in that zone. Potentially, we got to watch out for that. If we get up there tomorrow, it's already going to be a fantastic trade. Nice move today. Congratulations to everybody that caught the move today. And looking at this from a futures perspective, we held this zone. Remember in pre-market video, we're talking about this zone. Okay, yesterday we came back, we tested it, broke it by a couple of pennies, held. Today again, broke it by a couple of pennies, held. Telling you, there is algo turning on from this part of the chart. It's not retail. Retail can't push this like this. This is algo turning it on. So now we're looking. Are we going to come up? Now we got this trend line here. Let's go back to a regular candlestick here. We got this trend line here that I've been tracking on ES1. Okay, we closed over it. So I'm looking for a back test of that 263 range. Of course, we got headlines. Of course, coronavirus headlines aren't going away. They aren't going anywhere. Of course, all this stuff could immediately change overnight tonight. And hey, we'll be looking back tomorrow. But the idea is to give context for all the news that we do know and what the chart is telling us. And the chart is telling us. ES1 mini future spy is holding the Kumo cloud on the four hour. It's holding the 0.382 and it broke out of the wedge trend line. Again, let me just verify what the wedge trend line also is going to come into play on spy because remember we changed it to our all time high and that's going to come back into play if we could get there and that's going to be in that 255 range. That's what we're going to be watching tomorrow. The VIX is breaking down. It's continuously breaking down, but we need the big implosion on the VIX. So we still haven't got the big implosion. It is in a downtrend. I've been asked, you know, can you call this a bull flag? I wouldn't call this a bull flag. I don't really like calling anything a bull flag that's in a downtrend. This is a daily downtrend, four hour downtrend. Everything about it is in a downtrend. 
other than the weekly looking for some new support. But you can see here, this chart is breaking down into a downtrend. So we don't like this. I don't like it personally. And it's under the eight exponential. So personally for me, I would not call this a bull flag, but you can make the case and you know, people have different styles and there's no right or wrong answer. But looking at this right now, it continues to make new lows. Even the S&P 500, all the negative headlines, VIX is dropping off. Really, we need the big implosion on the VIX. That's what we want to see. And then the option chains will come back to some form of, hey, normalcy across the board. So let's move on and talk about gold. If you're playing gold right now, this is a nice bounce right off of the Kumo cloud. So holding the Kumo cloud here on the daily. So potentially, we're going to set up a daily equilibrium now between 1567 and 1645 kumo cloud need to break up over it now or we're just going to trade within it which then means i'd be looking for an inside bar tomorrow on gold qqq we want this to continue to see the bounce to push up spy don't forget qqq is the largest weighting sector tech sector in the s p 500 xlf the second Oil is, oil is third or fourth now. I can't remember if oil is third or fourth. So we saw a nice move today in US oil, which helped benefit the SPY move. And now we want to see if QQQ and XLF, if one of them could also continue this move back up. So QQQ holding our low from yesterday. So that would be ideal to hold that as a daily higher low, 180.86, and then come up and break that 195.25. XLF, let's just look at this really quickly here because I realized I don't have the chart set up. XLF, bullish and golf and candlestick. We want to see that move. We want to see that push tomorrow. Volume is good. Like, don't look at this volume and say, oh, no, the volume is not good. I mean, compare it to regular volume. That is fine. We want to, of course, see bigger volume for a larger move to the upside and come up over here and break our resistance at 2182 and hold this support at 1937. Congratulations to those bulls that played USO today. Huge move. I mean, the trade went up, what, 250, 280%, wherever you took profits, great. Don't forget, when you look at a chart, you want to say, what's the most likely scenario that's going to happen here? It's going to bounce. And that's what we saw today. We saw a bounce. Now, is the bounce over? I don't think so. But you want to remain protective. So I'm only swinging 25% of my position left because you don't want to let, you know, 280% trade, 250% trade end up being a 20% trade. You don't want to do that. So you want to make sure you're locking in gains. The first thing we want to do is get a close over the 8 exponential on the daily. What did we do today? We got a close over the 8 exponential on the daily. The last time we did that was 54.45. So we haven't done that since. Upper wick, we consolidated after the initial move, thanks to Mr. Trump for the pump. Mr. Trump pumped phase one deal. Is he gonna to continue to pump this oil situation now? But clearly oil's on everyone's minds, Russia, Saudi, US, this needs to be fixed. And that's what they're trying to do. Now trading back up at $24.72. We were trading down at 19. Wedge target broke out. Now let's look at that wedge target, right? On the four hour here, let's bring this up and look for where's our potential zone. So if we look at the widest part of the wedge here, our low to our high, let's look at this here. We're looking at about a $15 move. So $15 move. If we get the full range of this trade, you're looking at a move that takes us back into that $35 range. Does it need to happen? No, but it's something to be aware of. BA, so very excited to play BA back now into a bullish position. It's been a slow grind, a slow grind into the gap. There is a little bit of a gap down below still that we have not come down and filled, which is at 114.49. So I want to look at this tomorrow and I want to look at Tesla tomorrow, but unfortunately Tesla's already started to move because they had news after hours, significant move over 10%. BA, if it comes in, fills this gap, I'm going to be a buyer, going to be ready to take position, going to be thinking calls, Maybe you're going to take some shares as well. So we're going to watch this. We also have a falling wedge. So BA is on top watch tomorrow. We'll see what the market does and what the open is. I would love for the gap to completely fill and then it'll be an easy entry. Space, I am swinging space. I am swinging SPXL. You guys know that from the chat room. So space, I like the candlestick is set up and why and where it set it up. So the why is the golden pocket. The where, sorry, the where is the golden pocket. It's a morning star candlestick potential. We need to see it confirmed tomorrow. Of course, whatever happens tonight in the futures market is going to have an effect on this chart, but we got the gap fill, we got the golden pocket. This is a nice zone to bounce from. Potential morning star candlestick. We've got some gains to play with. So we'll let it be and see how it goes tomorrow. We close at 1296. Let me see what it's trading here right after hours, 1306. 
doesn't really mean much, but we'll check it out going into tomorrow. We would love for that to be the bottom, golden pocket, morning start confirmed, and then we have a beautiful bottom entry on this play for space. Tesla almost filled the gap. So close the puts today. That was a good trade. Could have been a great trade if it had escalated a little bit faster into the gap. But the 15 minute candle, so just some rationale. Look at this, Woo! 525 and I know some people are swinging overnight already. So congratulations guys, it's a huge move. And one of our members is in calls already. So that's a fantastic move. I was looking for it tomorrow, but it happened today. So it's gone. I'll relook at this chart tomorrow for a potential entry. But as of right now, I'm not gonna chase it. Let it be, let it come tomorrow. This, so we were watching this and seeing, I wanted the gap fill. I wanted to hold those calls all the way to the gap fill. And I was using the eight exponential as my guide, right? Eight exponential, we're trading below it, trading below it. And then boom, we got the move. We saw some increasing bull volume and it ended up being a shooting star candlestick and then a reversal after that. But you don't want to let a, at the time, I think it was 70% and then it went to 50 and then it's going to 30 and then you don't want to oh, let it go to zero. So at this point, you got to say, hey, take your gains, don't let the green trade go to red. And then it ended up fading, faded the whole time, never filled the full gap. And now we're up over 10% after hours. So notable, this is going to be a notable open tomorrow. We're going to be opening up. If we hold this, we're going to be up over here. Now Tesla's got to go back on top watch because we know Tesla could be irrational for a very long period of time. So we're gonna to have to see how the open is, how much consolidating there is, how much profit taking there is for anybody that's in right now, and then watch it for the higher low. Because if we break 560 with support nearby, setting up some nice higher lows, it's gonna run. It's gonna run. We've got gaps, the Kumo clouds, not till 660. Tesla back on top, top, top watch. Air Canada, this is setting up for a nice play as well here. So you see Air Canada had a nice bounce. Remember, very important for Canada, Air Canada doesn't go out of business, okay? It's a staple. It's, it's a pride thing, just like Boeing is for the US. That's what we're gonna see potentially with Air Canada. So yes, the fundamentals are really bad right now, flights are grounded, all this stuff, but still we're looking for this chart to base out. Potential right now, Morningstar Candlestick. Bottom of this trend, consolidating. Okay, bear volume yesterday peaked. Today we saw some bull volume. We want to see a curl back to the upside. So I'm going to be watching Air Canada on this chart. And if we look at this on the hourly chart, what do you see? Sideways trading. Okay, potential accumulation in this zone for a move back to the upside. CGC, thanks to Natty Maddie for pointing this out. We do have a descending triangle here. We could be potentially watching. So potentially if we hold this lower, we come up and back test. We're looking for the breakout. We do want to see a breakout. Now the standing triangle is a bearish formation, but it also could be a reversal pattern from where we are. We're trending down right now, so we could be looking for a reversal. That's what I'm going to be watching. Really, we want to see this double top here on the hourly first thing to go, 14.59. If we could break that 14.59 and ultimately make it a support level afterwards, then we could say MJ, a lot of MJs bought him out, even though we're seeing a bunch of companies go bankrupt, chapter 11, filing for credit, creditor protection. We know a lot more is coming, ton is coming, but we know CGC is gonna be all right. So we gotta keep it on watch in case there is a breakout coming. Zoom gonna have it on watch tomorrow. There was some news this morning on Zoom, cause the gap down. This was a trade that we were talking about potentially taking the short position in, lower high was coming. If you did, I don't know if anybody did take it, I didn't take it and ended up looking back at this trade, but if you did, congratulations, that was a huge trade to the downside. But now you got a spinning top candlestick at the bottom of this move with a volume climax potential. This tells me we should be looking upside now. We should be looking upside. So let's see tomorrow, we're likely going to open up as an inside bar, and then we wanna see if bull volume starts to come in. And then we'll be looking for a move back to the upside to look for a lower high. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Special shout out and heart goes out to Canadian Simp. Hearts with you. Hearts with the family. Rooting for you and can't wait to see you back. Peace out, everybody.